OK, so let's go over this y equals 3 to the y equals of 3 of x equals 1. So the main important thing to do a problem like this, um, I believe they're asking us to find all, of the sol or find all of the solutions. So first of all, I need to figure out, well, when does tan of x equal y? Now again, tangent becomes a little bit more difficult when looking at the unit circle because we need to remember, when I go and look at my points on the unit circle, remember tangent of theta is your ratio of your y coordinate over your x coordinate. So we're not looking for the point 1. We're not looking for an x or y coordinate that's 1 up there. We're looking for when is the ratio of my y and my x coordinate equal to 1. So I look at my first quadrant. And by knowing these points of the first quadrant for this first important points, I can see that there's only one ratio of y coordinate over x coordinate that's going to produce 1. It's going to be this angle right here, because square root of 2 divided by 2 divided by square root of 2 divided by 2, that obviously just equals 1. So we need to remember, what is that angle? Well, that's pi over 6. So this angle is pi over 4. So therefore, I can say in this case, 3x equals pi over 4. Now to find, again, all solutions, you treat this just the same as finding, um, finding it with not a multiple angle. Then I just divide by 3. x equals pi over 12. Um, I'm sorry, shoot. For finding all the solutions, right? OK. So oh, I forgot. I forgot a couple steps. So here, it works for pi over 4. But is that the only time when tangent equals pi over 4? I'm sorry, equals positive 1. No, there's this other angle over here. Well, we know over here, my x is negative. Down here, my y is negative. But if I do a direct ratio over here, that's negative square root of 2 over 2, comma, negative square root of 2 over 2. So the negative divided by negative will still make it a positive 1. If that's pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. OK, so therefore, I can say 3x equals 3 pi over 4, and 3x equals 5 pi over 4. Now, however, between my two solutions, you can see that if I say here's my first solution, well, to get to the next solution is just adding pi. To get to this next solution again, I add pi. And I can just keep on adding pi to get between the solutions. So rather than writing both of the solutions, I can combine this just to say 3x equals pi over 4 plus pi n. Because if I, n, if I add the n once, that takes me to this solution. If I add n twice, that takes me back over to another solution. So I can simplify this. I can simplify writing both those solutions like that. And then I can just divide by 3. So therefore, x equals pi over 12 plus pi over 3n. Now, if you guys were asked to find all of or find the solutions between 0 and 2 pi, what you'd have to do now is add numbers of n. Now, this is the answer, because it just says find all your solutions. But if I said find only solutions between 0 and 2 pi, what I have to do is plug in numbers in for n and see how many times Whenever I find a number for n, see if that answer falls between 0 and 2 pi. For instance, let me just do 1. Let's pretend n equals 1. So x equals pi over 12 plus pi over 3, right? Because n times pi over, or 1 times pi over 3 is 1 over 3. Combine those, so I'd multiply by 4 over 4. So x would equal 5 pi over 12. Would that be a solution between 0 and 2 pi? Yes, because 0 and 2 pi would be 24 over 12, right? It's the same thing. 0 and 2 pi is the same thing as 0 is 24 over pi. So therefore, I could do it for, I could add n once. I could add, I could make n 2, see if you could do n 3, and so forth, um, if you want to find it between 0 and 2 pi. But I'm just asking you guys to do it for all real solutions, so that would be your answer. Okay. I'll, 